can check out all of our separate videos for how they are specifically, but I wanted to share tips on how to go with a family. You may be wondering, is this something I can do with kids? How hard is it gonna be with five kids of our own, ages 12 to two? I can give you a good idea of how it's gonna be with kids. Absolutely go with children. They gear a lot of the Christmas markets towards families. So there's almost always something for kids. The only exception was this kind of little tiny town in France called Re Requeer? Requeer? I don't actually know. And um, I could butcher all French words. <laughs> but that one didn't really have anything for kids. All the other ones were pretty big and they had lots of stuff for kids. They'll have carousels, one had a little train in Stuttgart. They have little kid rides. Of course, they have toys and stuff for sale that kids always wanna buy. The one in Paris was amazing. It had huge amusement park rides for adults and children and like a maze for kids. So absolutely take your kids. There's usually an ice skating rink as well, which they'll provide all the things you need. I was a little worried. You can even rent gloves. Most of them will make you rent gloves, like in Strasbourg. You can rent the little trainer penguins and of course the ice skates. So all you need to do is show up to play. What time of day to go? So the Christmas markets are usually open at night. I think they're open a little bit during the day, but we always win at night. And I think they're way more fun at night. I would recommend going at night because that's when you get to see all the Christmas lights. They're almost always around a cathedral in the city. So you'll see the cathedral all lit up in all of its glory. Sometimes there's a Ferris wheel. Um, so honestly, the best thing to do is to go late in the afternoon, get a couple hours or one hour of daytime, and then watch all the lights turn on at night. What are you gonna find at Christmas markets in Europe? You're gonna find a lot of the same things. Chris got a little tired of the Christmas markets because he was like, I'm seeing all the same things. However, I still found it really interesting to go to all of them. You will see a lot of repeated things. And to be perfectly honest with you, a lot of them is kind of just like stuff from China. <laughs> some of the little signs at some of the Christmas markets would say, actually made here in France, not from China because a lot of it is from China. <laughs> but it's still a fun souvenir and you're gonna find fun stuff. Uh, the most unique handicraft one that we went to was Stuttgart, Germany, and it had like over 200 unique stalls of stuff that they were making. So a lot of candles, some cleaning supplies, some gloves, some gla a lot of glass items like little decorative glass plates, there's miniature Christmas villages. There's a lot of stuff to buy. And I felt like that one had the most unique handicrafts. So if that's what your thing is, which is what Chris is always looking for, that's a great one to go to. Strasbourg also had a lot of good stuff where we ended up buying the most, but I wouldn't say it was all necessarily handmade. Food, let's talk about food at Christmas markets. So here's kind of a funny thing that I discovered going to all these Christmas markets in three different countries is that it's pretty much all German food. You're gonna find sausages, usually with sauerkraut. You're gonna find um, potatoes with like cheese mixed in. You always find hot chocolate, hot cider. We don't drink alcohol, so we usually get hot chocolate or apple cider. Or you can also ask for Kinder wine which is basically Here's just spiced apple juice. Cake. Thank you, oh, that's delicious. Thanks, Harry, yummy. If you do drink alcohol, the mulled wine smells amazing all over the Christmas market. It's probably the first thing that you'll smell. And while I can't give you any personal opinions on it, everyone loves it. How cold is it? That's a really good question, especially when you're going with kids. I will tell you, it's very, very cold. <laughs> Plan for the very, very, very cold, okay? We almost always went in two or three layers. We would wear long underwear, sweatshirt, jacket, always had to have hats and gloves. On the few times that we didn't or that a certain kid didn't, we usually ended up buying them. And you usually can find them at the Christmas market because you won't be the first one to forget them, right? <laughs> Um, 
I never regretted going too warm. I would also wear really warm footwear. My mom was injured and she went to a few Christmas markets in a wheelchair and her feet were freezing because she wasn't walking on them. So dress really warm. Layers are always a really good idea when you're traveling and you're traveling in cold weather because you can always take them off. <laughs> and if you're lucky enough to have a stroller, which can be a little bit of a pain, but can also hold a lot of winter gear. So make sure you dress for the cold. And if it's warm, then bonus, right? But we never had a warm one. They were all very cold, very, very cold. currency should you plan to have at all of these Christmas markets? So first of all, cash is king at the Christmas markets. There are some stalls that will accept credit card, but for the most part, they're going to say no. Okay, all of Europe pretty much uses the Euro, except for Switzerland, which I learned when we went to Switzerland. They use the Swiss franc. They're not part of the European Union technically, even though they have no border control to get in, you do have to buy a little pass for your car. So if you're driving from France, like we were, then we had to buy a 40 euro sticker to go on our windshield. You buy that once a year and while you pass through, they do check for that sometimes. There was one time I went through that they didn't. Um, but they use the Swiss franc, which ends up at this moment being almost a one to one ratio with the US dollar. So they will accept euros because the euro is worth like 10% more than the Swiss franc and then they'll give you change in Swiss francs, <laughs> which is pretty annoying because you can only use those in Switzerland. <laughs> they don't accept many credit cards. Some did, I think like one out of five places that we asked accepted a credit card. So plan for that. You can still take your euros there if you go to Switzerland. And I really loved the one in Basel, but I will tell you that it was a lot more expensive than all the other ones we went to. Getting there. So we had our own car while we were in Europe and we always drove. That was never really a problem. Every big city in Europe or even small city is gonna have a parking garage. So just find your parking garage and plan to pay a few dollars for parking. Parking prices really varied from anywhere from like $5 to even $20 at some of the places like Switzerland. But I we found it really easy and you can almost always get parking just right there. If you wanna try and translate all the street signs and figure out if you're parked illegally or not, good luck. <laughs> we never attempted to do that. The remote village one, the Requier, France, we did have to drive through this little medieval town and, and while they had some parking available, it was all full. So we ended up parking kind of in like a forest behind the town and walking down. But most people are driving, it's no big deal. If you wanna take public transportation, that's of course very easy to do too in any big city in Europe. They have fantastic train systems, metro systems. And like in Switzerland, almost, there's very little of the population that actually owns a car. So they use public transportation almost exclusively. It's actually kind of rare to even see a car on the street, which I think was kind of fun. Security, let's talk about security. So Strasbourg was actually bombed in a terror attack, I think two years ago from the time that we went. And when, or maybe it was just one year before, I can't remember, I'll have to check. But because of that, it actually did have security. They had like sort of a set up perimeter around the center of the city and to get in, you had to go past the security guard. They would check your bag and they would kind of pat you down if they needed to. They did have metal detector wands too. So I found that kind of comforting, but that is something good to know. There was one other market that had it, but I can't remember which one it is. So. It is possible that you will have to go through a little bit of a security check, especially on some of the bigger ones that are a little more famous that could be a target for a negative terror attack. I think that wraps it up, guys. If you have any more questions, make sure to check out my blog. I have tons and tons of information there, including some stuff about Christmas markets, and it is www.7wayfinders.com. Please also feel free to email me or reach out through our Instagram or Facebook or any other way that you feel fit at any time. Let me know what you want to know in a video. I would love to hear from you. Make sure you subscribe and we'll see you later. 